So I'm going to read this book to you, and all of you are going to get a book today, okay? So you ready? And then we're going to talk about space. I'm going to show you some crazy things that we do in space, like how you play with your food in space. M&Ms in space. Water bubbles in space. All right. Okay, here we go. You ready? Everyone sit up. It's warm here, isn't it? Okay. We'll try to stay awake. I'm going to try to keep you awake, okay? This book is called The Moon Over Star by Deanna Hutz Aston, and the pictures are by Jerry Pinkney. Beautiful pictures. All right. I'm going to show you the pictures as we go along. All right. Here's the moon, and here's the earth. See that? Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Beautiful illustrations. Okay. Once upon a summer's morning in 1969, Grandpa led the singing in church, the light of Sunday gleaming on his silvery head. Through the open windows, our voices sailed over Star. That was their town, named Star. Then we bowed our heads and prayed for the astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin Jr., and Michael Collins. If all went well, a spaceship would land on the moon today, and I dreamed that maybe one day I could go to the moon too. Do you think you guys can go to the moon one day? Yeah. All right. There they are. That's the three of them in their, in their command capsule. My gramps thought the space program was a waste of money, but I knew he was praying for them too. I thought about the astronauts' kids and wondered if they were scared. Scared but proud. I know I'd be. I slipped my hand into my dad's hand and whispered, so only I could hear, God, please bless the astronauts, children too. So this is them on the farm. Once upon a summer's noon, my cousins and I scouted Grant's watermelon patch for the biggest one. It took three of us to carry it to a tub of ice, three and a half, counting my littlest cousin, Lacey. We decorated the picnic table with pails of wildflowers, then, our chores done, we built our own spaceship from scraps we found in the barn. You guys ever built a spaceship before? No. You want to build one one day? Yeah. Okay, here we go. There's a spaceship right here. I want you guys to help me count. T minus 15 seconds. 12, 11, 10, 9. Okay, hold up, hold up. We'll get back to that in a minute. As the oldest grandchild, I got to be launch controller and Commander Armstrong. Ignition sequence start. Here we go. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Liftoff. Okay, we have liftoff. We closed our eyes, imagining with all our might the rumble, the roar, and the force of the Saturn rocket. Blasting the spaceship into the stars, then we were rushing through space at 25,000 miles per hour. That's really fast, isn't it? Yeah. All right. There's the rocket taking off from Cape Canaveral in Florida. See all the smoke and the fire? This is the water back there in the clouds. It's really beautiful down there. And there's the moon. I wonder how many miles it is to the moon. Cousin Carrie said, I've been reading the moon stories in the paper, so I knew. About 240,000 miles, I said, and some scientists say it's moving away from us an inch or so further every year. I also knew that in May 1961, a month before I was born, President John F. Kennedy had said America would send men to the moon before the decade was out. Now that President Kennedy was in heaven, I wondered if he could see the astronauts. Was he smiling to know his dream was about to come true? Now, how far is the space station from here? Do you, anyone know? Two. Two hundred and... Ninety. She said two hundred and ninety. Two hundred and forty. So the moon is 240,000 miles from Earth, and the space station is 240 miles up in space right now. All right. That afternoon, we were helping Gramps with the tractor when Grand hollered, Come quick, they're landing. Gramps kept right on think tinkering with the engine. The rest of us ran pell-mell for the house and squirmed around the television screen as it glowed with equal parts of moon and the spaceship called Eagle. 
All right, so that's all of them sitting around the television. We heard the voice of Commander Armstrong directing the landing. Forward, forward, he said. Then the newsman, we all knew him, Walter Cronkite, exclaimed, man on the moon. That was the first time that a man stepped on the moon. For a split second, we were silent. The whole universe must have been as we waited and waited and waited to hear the voice of an astronaut 240,000 miles away. Houston, Tranquility Base, Commander Armstrong said. The Eagle has landed. That was their command ship that went down on the moon. Boy, did we cheer all of the cousins and even the grown-ups, all except Gramps. See, there's Gramps right there sitting outside. I remembered something he had once said. Why spend all that money to go to the moon when there's so many folks in need right here on Earth? Because we can. I'd almost shouted, but caught myself. I began to wonder then what Gramps' dreams had been. From the time he was little, he had worked the farm, doing the same jobs day to day, season to season. He worked the same thing over and over. But as you get your education, you can do anything you put your mind to, right? Yes. yes. What did you say? I didn't hear you. Yes. All right, that's what I want to hear. When the crickets began to sing, Gramps took out his pipe. I pulled off his dirt cake boots for him and stomped around the porch. Suddenly, I could see how tired he was. Lifetime tired. There were deep lines in his face, a farmer's face, an old farmer's face. All right, Gramps, I said, it's okay. All right, that's everyone outside. Once upon a summer's night in 1969, we spread blankets and folding chairs on the edge of the yard where the buffalo grass grew thick and soft. The corn stalks whispered while we gazed at the pearly slice of moon and the stars gleaming like spilled sugar. What were the astronauts seeing right at this very second? Could they see beyond the moon to Mars or Neptune, Jupiter? We passed around a bowl of popcorn. What I could see above me and what I could see in my imagination were better than any picture show. How many of you looked up and seen the moon at night? Okay. It looks really big sometimes, right? When it's on the horizon, it comes up. Really big and orange. All right. Later on that summer's night in 1969, the television screen flashed with words that gave me goosebumps. Live from the surface of the moon. And Mr. Cronkite said, Neil Armstrong, 38-year-old American, standing on the surface of the moon on this July 20th, 1969. I didn't know it then, but there were 600 million people the world over watching me and listening when Commander Armstrong said, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. That was the first words from the moon. All of us from New York to Tokyo to Paris to Cairo to star, and maybe even President Kennedy too, all of us watched it together, the astronauts bounding across the moon like ghosts on a trampoline. I felt a hand on my shoulder. I reckon that's something to remember, Graham said quietly. That's them walking on the moon with their moon boots. How many have on tennis shoes in here? Okay. Those tennis shoes came from this NASA technology, these moon boots. So a lot of the technology and things you have today came from space technology. Okay, there's Grandpa and a young lady. Later when it was quiet as the world ever gets, Gramps and I stood together under the moon. What's mankind, I asked him. He puffed on his pipe. It's all of us. He finally said, all of us. Whoever ever lived, all of us still to come. I put my hand in his hand. Just think, Gramps, if they could go to the moon, maybe one day I could too. Great days, he said, an astronaut in the family. Who'd have thought I smiled in the dark? My Gramps was so proud of me. First airplane I ever saw, I was your age, was right over yonder. Gramps said, nodding towards the cornfield. That was something to see. Oh boy, something to see. A sigh in Gramps' voice made my heart squeeze. Keep on dreaming, May, he said. 
Just remember, we're here now together on the prettiest star in the heavens. All right. Y'all like that? Yeah.